2023 marked a year of extreme weather. Now all of a sudden it started raining real hard and then the um, uh, wind started picking up. January kicking off the new year with a string of tornadoes across the Midwest and South. It went from very calm and quiet to chaos very quickly. Followed by unprecedented rains bringing floods and landslides in California. We know some of the destruction is going to take years to fully recover and rebuild. But we got to re not just rebuild, we got to rebuild better. By February, Texas and the Midwest were experiencing an ice storm as freezing temperatures spread across the Northeast. It hit about 3 a.m. and you could hear the you could hear the trees starting to collapse. And in California, a rare blizzard warning was called into effect for parts of Southern California, while snow lovers welcomed the extra powder across other parts of the state and nearby Nevada. It's amazing. I think it's the best snow we've had in 20 years. In March, the extreme weather wasn't letting up. Deadly tornadoes tore through the south. Meantime, in the Bay Area, as winds reached hurricane-level speed. All of a sudden, the wind came, and it was just the loudest thing you ever heard. Tornadoes continued through April, a severe storm system unleashing strong winds and hail over the central U.S., leaving more than 17,000 residents without power. And in May, wildfires raged in Alberta, Canada, reducing air quality all over the world. It seems to be the new normal now that wildfire smoke is part of our summer. June started off hot, heat waves sweeping across the U.S., before delivering in July the four hottest days on record. It feels like we're wearing a blanket, like the heat, the, the amount of humidity is just sitting on my skin. Summer also kick-started El Nino. Probably the heaviest rain we've seen in parts of the area in a long time. August ushered in extreme heartbreak when the Hawaiian island of Maui was devastated by a terrible wildfire. We stopped by the highway because our house is right by the highway. But I cannot, I cannot kind of cry. The fires also fueled debate over the cause and the impacts of climate change, particularly as experts credited extreme heat for the resurgence of malaria cases in the U.S. Within the century, 90% of the global population could be at risk of mosquito-borne diseases like dengue and malaria. So in a way, we're seeing a preview of coming attractions. Experts also blamed Tropical Storm Hillary for prolonging mosquito season in California. We are uh, keeping an eye on this water level. As August rounded out with Idalia, a Category 3 hurricane striking Florida. Flooding is not just a hurricane issue. It is a year-round problem in Florida. The Northeast got a drenching of its own in September when Tropical Storm Ophelia thrashed the eastern seaboard. Do not enter the water. Uh, there's still going to be riptides and the surf is still going to be rough. There was more rough surf in October when Hurricane Tammy, the seventh of the Atlantic hurricane season, struck the Caribbean. But the storm was short-lived, ushering in a relatively calm November followed by dramatic flooding and rescue scenes caused by an atmospheric river at the start of December. And El Nino's impact is not expected to reach its peak until later this winter, which experts predict could lead to more extreme weather these next several months. In Washington, Caroline Shively, Fox News. Madam Clerk, I rise to nominate Kevin McCarthy for Speaker of the House. A year of D.C. politics was as chaotic as it started back in January, with a brutal five-day fight over who should hold the speaker's gavel. That was easy, huh? But with the position came big challenges, like how to deal with Republican Congressman George Santos, accused of lying to his New York constituents on his resume. When you come on investigators' radar, they're going to start looking at other issues. And there was even more drama over classified documents. The country's top secrets found at the homes of Donald Trump, Mike Pence, and even President Joe Biden. We're cooperating fully and completely with the Justice Department's review. But Mr. Trump's case, the most extreme, landing him an indictment. And they kept on coming from Georgia, where he got a mugshot, and at the federal level, making him the first former president to be charged by the Justice Department. This is a persecution of a political opponent. This was never supposed to happen in America. And he wasn't alone. Hunter Biden became the first sitting U.S. president's child to be indicted. A lot of questions and we need some answers. And on the bench, Justice Clarence Thomas faced ethics questions of his own as the Supreme Court drew controversy, eliminating affirmative action in college admissions. This is not a normal court. 
Then they struck down Biden's multi-billion dollar student loan forgiveness plan. My administration will continue to use every tool at our disposal. But nothing quite captured Americans' attention like that Chinese spy balloon floating in the sky. They successfully took it down, and I want to compliment our aviators who did it. Or cocaine found at the White House. We'll let the investigation unfold. There was also Ukrainian President Zelensky making an in-person appeal for Washington support. Thank you very much. On the campaign trail, Republicans lined up to win the nomination as the GOP's frontrunner skipped the debates. Well, thank you very much, Iowa. It is great to be back. He needs to come and he needs to uh, defend his record. Meantime, Biden shifted his focus to his international agenda, traveling to the UK and Ireland. As the Irish saying goes, your feet will bring you where your heart is. But amid the show of unity abroad, the divisions on Capitol Hill reached a boiling point. Speaker McCarthy voted out of the job in an extraordinary showdown, as well as Congressman Santos. The whole number of the House is now 434. As for the debate over a new federal funding package, Congress pushed that back until the new year. In Washington, Madla Rivera, Fox News. Closer, I am to a double feature phenomenon, an era of swift and a historic strike. A Hollywood double strike shut down the industry for months with writers and actors on the picket lines. WGA went on strike May 2nd. SAG-AFTRA joined them July 14th. It was the first time in more than 60 years both guilds were on strike together. The unions were negotiating contracts with the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers. Issues at hand included wage increases, streaming residuals, and protections over artificial intelligence. WGA reached a deal September 27th. The SAG-AFTRA a strike ended November 9th with its deal officially ratified December 5th. Let's go recruit some scientists. A couple of the last films to have promotional activities prior to the strike became the double feature phenomenon of the summer, Barbie and Oppenheimer, a.k.a. Barbenheimer. A trend on social media to see the two films back to back added to the box office success of both. When my heart breaks. Barbie, led by Margot Robbie and directed by Greta Gerwig, went on to become the biggest movie of the year. It topped $1.4 billion globally. Gerwig became the first solo female director to have a billion-dollar film. Very busy today. Uh, no time to help you. At the Oscars, multiverse sci-fi adventure Everything Everywhere All at Once took Best Picture. Its lead, Michelle Yeoh, became the first Asian woman to win Best Actress. At the Grammys, Beyonce added four more trophies to her collection. It brought her total to 32, and she broke the record for the artist with the most Grammy wins ever. <laughs> Britney Spears told her story in her memoir, The Woman in Me. The book became a bestseller with 1.1 million copies sold in its first week. <laughs> In celebrity legal news, Gwyneth Paltrow won in court after an eight-day live stream trial over a ski accident in Utah in 2016. A retired optometrist claimed the accident led to traumatic brain injury. He sued for more than $300,000 in damages. A jury found the movie star not at fault, and she was awarded her symbolic $1 in economic damages. Singer-songwriter Ed Sheeran was sued for copyright infringement by heirs of late songwriter Ed Townsend, who co-wrote Marvin Gaye's 1973 classic, Let's Get It On. They claimed Sheeran's Thinking Out Loud had striking similarities. Sheeran's attorneys argued the tunes share frequently used versions of unprotectable chord progression. A jury ruled in Sheeran's favor. I was going to break up with Ariana regardless. A reality TV scandal was all the talk when it was revealed Vanderpump Rules star Tom Sandoval cheated on longtime girlfriend Ariana Maddox with her friend and their co-star Raquel Levis. It became famously known as Scandoval. Reality holds no power. Big tours premiered on the big screen. Beyonce's Renaissance Tour, which grossed $580 million, was released in theaters December 1st. Taylor Swift's Eras Tour, which made more than $1 billion, was in theaters October 13th, and it became the highest grossing concert film ever in the U.S. The superstar also had fans sharing their joy over personal news this year when she went public with her high-profile relationship with Kansas City Chiefs' Travis Kelsey. Swifties celebrated the release of 1989 Taylor's version, helping her earn the Spotify title of artist with the most streams in a single day.
Taylor Swift then rounded out 2023 with another title. She was named Time Magazine's Person of the Year. In Hollywood, Ashley Dvorkin, Fox News. Runaway cars, inmates, and bears. Oh my, 2023 brought us some jaw-dropping moments and cameras captured them all. Like this deer who gave Santa sleigh team a run for its money when he jumped several feet in the air right into the bed of a pickup truck. <laughs> Actor Will Ferrell may have a new career as a DJ after taking a spin at his son's USC frat party. Black t-shirt. While these folks could try their hand at the NFL after tackling robbers in the street and on the playground. <laughs> Mother Nature was captured buckling roads, stirring dust devils, and kicking up powerful surf along the Florida coast as Hurricane Idalia made landfall. And Fox cameras were there the moment U.S. fighter jets shot down a Chinese spy balloon over the Atlantic Ocean. Bears were seen raiding kitchens, trucks, and dumpsters. We now have a slippery pool deck here. While a 10-foot alligator took a dip in a backyard pool. Even a rabbit got in on the action, or at least a thief dressed like one. And it wasn't the most magical place on earth for this bear, who broke into Disney World's Magic Kingdom and forced several rides to temporarily close. Hey, Keith, Metro Police, come over here. Hey, Metro Police. Right. Las Vegas police making an arrest in the death of rapper Tupac Shakur and potentially bringing an end to a decades long investigation. Surveillance cameras also catching this inmate crab walking up the walls of a Pennsylvania prison before leading police on a nearly two week long manhunt. And for this group of burglars, stealing one car wasn't enough. They returned to the same California dealership hours later to grab another. Hey, stay back from the window, buddy. I'm going to bust it, okay? I'm busting the window. A dramatic scene also playing out in Florida as deputies worked overnight to rescue a driver trapped upside down in his car. Wondered so many times about so. these rings. This man reunited with his parents' wedding rings after more than a decade when a homeowner found them hidden in kitchen lights inside the couple's old home. <laughs> while an Arizona woman had the most emotional reunion of them all when she met the recipient of her late husband's lungs. With artificial intelligence playing a bigger role online, some things that appear to be caught on camera may need to be watched with a closer eye in 2024. In Chicago, I'm Garrett Tenney, Fox News.